Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending Diodes Incorporated's product training module entitled Hall Effect Sensors Introduction. This is an agenda of the talking points in this module. It starts with a brief explanation of Hall Effect Sensors and related core concepts such as magnets, magnetic fields, and the Lorentz force, explains the Hall Effect, and finishes up with the types of Hall Effect Sensors and some examples. A Hall effect sensor is a type of sensor that detects the presence and strength of magnetic fields using the Hall effect, converting magnetically coded information into electrical signals. It is a type of contactless sensor, meaning these sensors do not undergo mechanical wear and have virtually infinite life. Basic applications of Hall effect sensors are to sense the position, proximity, and rotation of an object with a magnet attached to it. There are a myriad of applications that use Hall effect sensors. Here are only a small handful of examples shown on this slide, with many applications capable of utilizing multiple Hall effect sensors. Smoke detectors can use Hall effect sensors in case tampering detection, where it detects if the chassis of the smoke detector has been removed. Some designs also use a Hall effect sensor to allow a smoke detector to enter a self-test mode using a magnet instead of having to physically push a button on the smoke detector itself. This is useful when the smoke detector is mounted high on a wall or ceiling. Washing machines can use Hall effect sensors to detect if its door is open or closed before beginning its wash cycle. They can be used to detect the rotational position of the washing machine's control knob so the machine knows the user selected wash cycle. Hall effect sensors can also be used to know the rotational speed of the washing machine drum, since different wash cycles may require the drum to spin at different speeds. Coffee and espresso machines can use Hall effect sensors as part of a flow meter to detect the amount of beverage dispensed. Microwave ovens can use Hall effect sensors to detect if its door is opened or closed. Hall effect sensors can also be used in the microwave's control knob and buttons. Phone docking stations can use Hall effect sensors to detect if the phone has been properly docked before initiating charging. Even among these select examples, Hall effect sensors may be used in these applications beyond what was just described. A basic explanation of the Hall effect follows after touching upon some core concepts related to it. Magnetic fields are produced by magnets. Every magnet has two poles, a north pole and a south pole. External to the magnet, its magnetic field lines are seen originating from its north pole and terminating at its south pole. However, magnetic field lines always make closed loops, so the field lines actually continue inside the magnet from south to north. Magnetic flux is the measurement of the total magnetic field that passes through a given area. The SI unit of measurement for magnetic flux is the Weber. For Hall effect sensor applications, the concept of magnetic flux density is more important. Magnetic flux density is the amount of magnetic flux per unit area. The SI unit of measurement for magnetic flux density is the Tesla. However, the Gauss is also very commonly used to denote magnetic flux density, including Diodes' own Hall effect sensor products. 10 Gauss is equal to 1 millitesla. Inside Hall effect sensor devices, there is a small active area that detects the magnetic flux density. This active area is called the Hall element. Magnetic flux density, given the symbol of an uppercase B, is approximately proportional to the inverse square of the distance, lowercase d, between the Hall element and the magnet. In other words, magnetic flux density is strongest at the poles of a magnet but falls off quickly with increased distance. This means that magnetic sensing is really only effective at short distances. Permanent magnets come in many different shapes and sizes. Some common magnet shapes are the disc, cylinder, ring, block, and sphere. Permanent magnets can be created with many different magnetization directions, a concept which makes the most sense when discussing the disc, cylinder, and ring shapes. These three magnet shapes are most commonly axially magnetized, which means the magnet is magnetized along its geometric axis. That is, the north and south poles are located on the opposite flat surfaces on the magnet. However, these magnets can be diametrically magnetized, which means the magnet is magnetized through its diameter. That is, the north and south poles are located on opposite curved surfaces of the magnet. Here is a brief table of four main types of material families that are used to manufacture permanent magnets. In general order of increasing magnetic strength, those materials are ceramic, also known as ferrite, aluminum nickel cobalt, samarium cobalt, and neodymium iron boron, commonly known as neodymium. Ceramic magnets have low manufacturing costs but is brittle and can be prone to cracking and chipping. Aluminum nickel cobalt magnets are ideal for high temperature applications where other magnets would typically demagnetize in the same high temperature conditions. They can have a high cost due to its nickel and cobalt content. Samarium cobalt magnets use samarium in its construction, which is a rare earth element. 
These magnets are used in applications where magnetic stability over a wide range of temperatures is required. It is typically the most expensive type of magnet to manufacture, due to its high cobalt content as well as the brittle nature of the samarium cobalt alloy. Neodymium iron boron magnets use neodymium in its construction, also a rare earth element. These are the strongest of the available magnet materials, but have generally low maximum operating temperature. Neodymium magnets require a coating around it, or else they are very susceptible to corrosion. The underlying physical principle of the Hall effect is the Lorentz force, which is the force exerted on a charged particle due to electric and magnetic fields. Take a positive test charge, Q. If it moves with a velocity vector v, perpendicularly to an applied magnetic field vector b, it experiences a force exerted on it, vector f, that is perpendicular to both vector v and vector b. A useful mnemonic to better visualize this is the right hand rule. One form of the right hand rule is to take an open right hand and point the fingers in the same direction that the test charge is traveling, which is along vector v. Next, curl the fingers toward the palm of the hand in the direction of the magnetic field, which is vector b. The thumb then naturally points in the direction of the force, vector f, experienced by the positive test charge. Note that the force would be in the opposite direction for a negative test charge, moving in the same direction as the positive test charge example. Having touched upon some of the related core concepts, now, what is the Hall effect? The Hall effect, discovered in 1879 and named after its discoverer, Dr. Edwin Hall, is the production of a potential difference across a conductor when a magnetic field is applied perpendicularly to the direction of current flow within that conductor. This generated voltage is perpendicular to both the current and magnetic field. To help visualize what that looks like, imagine a conductor that has conventional current flowing through it from right to left. Since a conductor's charge carriers are electrons, the direction of electron flow is actually from left to right. As is, free electrons will flow through the conductor in a straight line from left to right with a uniform distribution. Next, this current carrying conductor is placed in a uniform magnetic field perpendicular to the direction of current flowing through it. The magnetic field direction in this example is shown passing through the conductor from top to bottom. The uniform electron current distribution is disturbed by this magnetic field, and the flowing electrons experience a Lorentz force and are forced closer toward the front face of the conductor. The front face of the conductor becomes negatively charged due to the accumulation of free electrons in the region. Conversely, the relative lack of free electrons on the opposite side of the conductor creates a positively charged back face. The potential difference created between the back and front faces of the conductor is called the Hall voltage, VH. This generated Hall voltage is very small, usually on the order of microvolts, which means it needs to be amplified to help improve the effectiveness of the Hall effect sensor. The amount of Hall voltage measured is directly proportional to the current and magnetic field strength and inversely proportional to the conductor thickness. Note that the Hall voltage is generated perpendicular to both the direction of the current flow and applied magnetic field. The orientation of the Hall element, sometimes called the Hall plate, is important for proper operation of Hall effect sensors. Incorrect orientation of the Hall element can result in erroneous detection of magnetic fields. In typical single-axis Hall effect sensor construction, the Hall element is embedded on a silicon chip that is then put into an IC package in such a way that the Hall element is parallel with the top surface of the package. The top surface of the package is typically where the part's marking information is located, and is sometimes called the branded face of the package. The embedded Hall element is sensitive only to the component of magnetic fields that cross perpendicularly through it. In the example on this slide, the Hall element is sensitive only to the z-axis component of magnetic fields. Most of Diodes' Hall effect sensor products use the convention that the magnetic flux density is positive when the magnetic flux lines are traveling from the bottom of the device through the top. That is, a south pole's magnetic flux density is positive. As the south pole approaches the Hall effect sensor by moving along the z-axis, the magnetic flux density, B, becomes more positive. As the south pole moves away from the Hall effect sensor, B becomes less positive. Conversely, magnetic flux density is negative when the magnetic flux lines are traveling from the top of the device through the bottom. That is, a north pole's magnetic flux density is negative. As the north pole approaches the Hall effect sensor along the z-axis, B becomes more negative. As the north pole moves away from the Hall effect sensor, B becomes less negative. When both the north and south poles are far away enough from the sensor, B is zero. In this configuration, the magnet moves toward and away from the branded face of the device along the z-axis, perpendicular to the Hall element placement within the Hall effect sensor. This is called a head-on configuration. The magnet can also move sideways along the x-axis direction and slide back and forth over the branded face of the Hall effect sensor. 
This is called a slide-by configuration. In this configuration, the Hall effect sensor is still detecting the z-axis component of the magnetic field. A north pole's magnetic flux density is still negative, and a south pole's magnetic flux density is still positive. When the north and south poles are equidistant from the sensor as the magnet slides by, the detected magnetic flux density in the z-axis direction is zero. Related to the slide-by configuration is the use of a rotating ring magnet. The poles of the ring magnet can be considered to be sliding by the branded face of the package as the magnet rotates at a fixed distance from the sensor. As a slight aside, multiple independent hull elements can be arranged perpendicularly to each other into a single device to measure magnetic field strength along different axes. Using two hull elements in a single device gives a 2D hull effect sensor capable of simultaneously detecting two of the three axis components of a magnetic field among the X, Y, and Z directions. Extending this further, a 3D hull effect sensor uses three hull elements, with each hull element detecting in a different axis among the X, Y, and Z directions. There are several main types of hull effect sensors, falling into two main output types, digital and linear. Digital output hall effect sensors use either a push-pull or open-drain output stage configuration. They can be further categorized into latch, unipolar, and omnipolar type devices. Unipolar and omnipolar hall effect sensors are also referred to as hall effect switches. For typical digital hall effect sensors, their outputs are set to logic low when they turn on and logic high when they turn off. The defined magnetic flux density threshold to turn on the device corresponds to its BOP, or magnetic operating point. The defined magnetic flux density threshold to turn off the device corresponds to its BRP, or magnetic release point. The BOP and BRP of a device are separated by hysteresis, called BHIS, to prevent false triggering due to noise. For linear Hall effect sensors, their outputs are voltages that are linearly proportional to the detected magnetic flux density. A simplified example functional block diagram of a Hall effect switch with a push-pull output is shown. A magnetic field will vary the Hall voltage generated from the Hall element. Since the Hall voltage generated is usually on the order of microvolts, it needs to be amplified. The amplified signal then controls an output driver with hysteresis to drive the output FETs. The output is then driven to either a logic low or logic high state, depending on the detected magnetic field. Next, a simplified example functional block diagram of a linear Hall effect sensor is shown. As before with the Hall effect switch, a magnetic field will vary the Hall voltage generated from the Hall element. The amplifier amplifies the Hall voltage. However, this time, the amplifier directly controls the output FET's current. With the output stage being a FET in series with a constant current source, this configuration allows the output of the linear Hall effect sensor to be an analog voltage signal. A latch Hall effect sensor turns on and sets its output to a logic low level with the detection of a sufficiently dense magnetic flux. This is usually the magnet's south pole approaching the device, which corresponds to a positive magnetic flux density. When the south pole is removed from the sensor and the detected magnetic flux density decreases, the sensor stays in the on position. Detecting the magnet's south pole again by bringing it closer to the sensor in this state will not alter its output. In other words, its output is latched to the logic low state. Next, detecting sufficient magnetic flux density of the magnet's opposite pole, in this case the north pole, the latch Hall effect sensor turns off, with its output changing from a logic low to a logic high level. Similarly, removing and then reapplying the north pole during this state will not affect the device's output. It will still be a logic low, only with the application of the south pole will the device turn on again. In the example diagrams on this slide, the latch Hall effect sensor is in a fixed distance, D, from a multipole ring magnet, with two north poles and two south poles on a rotary shaft rotating in the clockwise direction. In step one, the sensor is right in between a set of north and south poles, so the detected magnetic flux density, B, is zero. The output state of the device is at a logic high, BDD. In step two, the ring magnet rotates clockwise enough such that B is positive and triggers the BOP threshold. The output transitions from a logic high to a logic low state, from VDD to zero volts. In step three, the rotation of the magnet positions a south pole directly over the latch Hall effect sensor. Here, the detected magnetic flux density is at its most positive. The BOP threshold has already been triggered in the previous step, so the output remains unchanged at zero volts. In step four, B decreases from its peak and decreases back to the BOP threshold level. Still, the output level remains unchanged. In step five, the sensor is right in between a set of south and north poles, so the detected magnetic flux density, B, is again zero. Even though B has decreased back to zero gauss, since the BOP threshold was already crossed in step two, 
the output state is still latched at 0 volts. In step 6, the ring magnet rotates enough such that B is now negative and triggers the BRP threshold. The output transitions from a logic low to a logic high state, from 0 volts to VDD. In step 7, the rotation of the magnet positions a north pole directly over the latch Hall effect sensor. Here, the detected magnetic flux density is at its most negative. The BRP threshold has already been triggered in the previous step, so the output state remains unchanged at VDD. In step 8, B increases from its minimum and increases back to its BRP threshold level. Again, the output level remains unchanged. After step 8, the ring magnet rotates clockwise back to step 1, where the sensor is positioned right between a set of north and south poles. B is 0 again here. Even though B has increased back to 0 gauss, since the BRP threshold was already crossed in step 6, the output state is still latched to VDD. As the ring magnet continues rotating clockwise, it repeats the cycle of turning on and off the latch Hall effect sensor, toggling its output state between 0 volts and VDD. An application example that can use the latch Hall effect sensor is in cordless power tools, such as a cordless drill. The multipole ring magnet and Hall effect latch combination measures the rotational speed of the drill's motor as it spins. Unipolar Hall effect sensors only respond to a single pole of a magnet, either only the south pole or only the north pole. The opposite pole will have no effect on the device's function. The example unipolar Hall effect sensor on this slide shows a response only to the south pole of a magnet. The magnet shown here moves along the z-axis in a head-on configuration with the unipolar Hall effect sensor. As the south pole approaches the branded face of the device package, the positive magnetic flux density, B, increases. The magnet's distance of D1 corresponds to a sufficiently high positive B to trigger the BOP threshold. At this point, the device turns on and the output state transitions from VDD to 0 volts. If the distance decreases to less than D1, it just corresponds to a greater positive B than is required to cross the BOP threshold. The device is still on and the output state is still at 0 volts. As the south pole moves away from the branded face of the device package, B decreases towards 0 gauss. The magnet's distance of D2 corresponds to a sufficiently low positive B to trigger the BRP threshold. At this point, the device turns off and the output state transitions from 0 volts to VDD. If the distance increases to greater than D2, it just corresponds to a lesser positive B than is required to cross the BRP threshold. The device is still off and the output state is still at VDD. In this example, if a north pole approaches the branded face, it will have no effect on the unipolar Hall effect sensor. The device is still off and the output state is still at VDD, no matter the amount of negative magnetic flux density. An application example that can use the unipolar Hall effect sensor is in the charging case for wireless Bluetooth earbuds. The charging case would use multiple unipolar Hall effect sensors. A magnet in the charging case lid, along with one sensor in the case body, is used to detect if the charging case lid is open or closed. There is a small magnet located at the end of each earbud, and there is one sensor for each earbud in the charging case itself to detect if the earbuds have been properly inserted into its case. An omnipolar Hall effect sensor operates very much like the unipolar Hall effect sensor described in the previous slides. The major difference between the two is that an omnipolar device responds to any magnetic pole, both south and north. This device has two sets of BOP and BRP thresholds, one for the south pole and one for the north pole. An application example that can use the omnipolar Hall effect sensor is in the magnetic tamper detection for electricity meters, or e-meters. For instance, the current transformer current sensor in an e-meter can be tampered with by introducing a strong external magnetic field. This external magnetic field could reduce the current reading, which ultimately leads to a discrepancy where the e-meter thinks the customer is using less electricity than they actually are. To counteract this magnetic tampering, three one-dimensional Hall effect sensors each arranged to detect magnetic fields in a different spatial axis, or one three-dimensional Hall effect sensor, can be used to detect this external magnetic field from any direction. A linear Hall effect sensor outputs a voltage that is proportional to the detected magnetic flux density. They often incorporate a ratio metric design such that the output voltage scales with the supply voltage, VDD, and are therefore also called ratio metric linear Hall effect sensors. The slope of the output voltage response is known as sensitivity and is measured in millivolts per gauss. The higher the sensitivity, the lower the linear magnetic sensing range. The linear magnetic sensing range is the range of magnetic flux density in which the linear Hall effect sensor's output voltage response remains linear. The sensitivity also increases with an increase of the VDD supply voltage, which can alter the linear magnetic sensing range. Linear Hall effect sensors come in the unipolar and bipolar varieties. 
Unipolar linear Hall effect sensors only respond to one polarity of magnetic flux density, usually positive flux density corresponding to a magnet's south pole. Bipolar linear Hall effect sensors respond to both south and north poles. For both of these types of linear Hall effect sensors, detecting an increasing magnetic flux density will increase the output voltage toward VDD. Detecting a decreasing magnetic flux density will decrease the output voltage toward zero volts. One of the main differences between unipolar and bipolar, then, is the output voltage when there is no magnetic flux density sensed. For unipolar linear Hall effect devices that only sense positive magnetic flux densities, zero gauss corresponds to a low, but non-zero, output voltage. For bipolar linear Hall effect devices, since it can detect both positive and negative magnetic flux densities, zero gauss corresponds to an output voltage close to half of VDD. The magnetic response graph of the bipolar linear Hall effect sensor shows an example device A in red having a higher sensitivity than example device B in blue. This example shows a bipolar ratio metric linear Hall effect sensor and associated magnet in a slide by configuration. There is a fixed air gap distance between the magnet and the sensor. The variable distance, d, is the distance from the center of the magnet to the center of the sensor. The magnet is moving in the x-axis direction from the left of the sensor, a negative d position, to the right of the sensor, a positive d position. The sensor is detecting the z-axis component of the magnetic field. In step 1, the magnet starts out at a negative d2 position from the sensor. Since the magnet's north pole is closer to the sensor, the sensor will detect a negative magnetic flux density, a negative b. In step 2, as the magnet approaches the sensor at a distance of negative d1, the detected magnetic flux density becomes more negative. In step 3, the center of the magnet is aligned with the center of the sensor. Here, d is equal to 0, and the magnetic flux density is equal to 0. In step 4, the magnet continues to slide by the linear Hall effect sensor to a distance of positive d1. The sensor detects the south pole's positive magnetic flux density. In step 5, the magnet slides to a distance of positive d2, and the positive magnetic flux density decreases toward zero gauss. Taking the z-axis components of the magnetic flux density versus distance graph, notice that there is a linear region around the origin. Zooming in, it is this linear behavior in this region around the origin that allows the linear Hall effect sensor to accurately detect the position of the moving magnet. For example, a more negative B sensed in this region corresponds to an output voltage closer to zero volts. A more positive B sensed in this region corresponds to an output voltage closer to VDD. And of course, no magnetic flux detected corresponds to an output voltage of about VDD over 2. An application example that can use the linear Hall effect sensor is in valve position sensing. Usually in this application, a two-pole ring magnet is used in conjunction with a linear Hall effect sensor. As the valve opens or closes, it rotates the attached ring magnet. The rotation of the ring magnet changes the magnetic flux density detected by the linear Hall effect sensor, which outputs a voltage proportional to the flux density. This voltage is fed back to a control system so it knows precisely how opened or closed the valve is. This allows the system to more accurately regulate the amount of substance flowing past the valve. Here is a brief summary review of this module. It described what a Hall effect sensor is with a few example use cases. It also introduced several related concepts to the operation of Hall effect sensors such as magnets and magnetic fields, common permanent magnet shapes and materials, the Lorentz force, and the Hall effect itself. Next, it introduced the common Hall effect sensor detection orientation convention, where detecting a south pole denotes a positive magnetic flux density, and detecting a north pole denotes a negative magnetic flux density. Lastly, it explained the main types of Hall effect sensors, showed simplified functional block diagrams of their design, as well as an example operation of each type. Diodes Incorporated kindly thanks you for viewing this product training module entitled Hall Effect Sensors Introduction.